Have you ever wondered what it'd be like to be in some of your classic Disney movies or to take a photo with Ariel? Well, we're gonna do that today. We're gonna go over everything you need to know about New Fantasyland or Fantasyland at Disney's Magic Kingdom. Today we're gonna go over everything that you need to know while visiting Fantasyland over in the Magic Kingdom. Disney classics such as the Beauty and Beast story or Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs have been a part of many of our childhood memories and being able to experience that in real life is incredible. This is what makes that Disney vacation so magical, especially here in Fantasyland. What should you expect from New Fantasyland? When you visit this part of the Magic Kingdom Park, expect the usual outstanding Disney Park service. If you're a fan of the Disney experience like I am, you know that they go all out in whatever project that they are trying to do, especially if they're trying to put you in that immersive atmosphere. There are three parts to Fantasyland. There's Storybook Circus from the Dumbo movie area. There's the Enchanted Forest type area where you get to meet the Disney princesses and it's located towards the front of the area of New Fantasyland. Then there's the Castle Courtyard where you'll find some of the classic Disney characters. Here you'll get to meet Ariel in her clamshell and even experience Enchanted Tales with Belle. This is a sing-along slash story-along, meaning you get to go along with the story with Belle and participate. It's quite fun and, you know, if you are an adult and you don't mind bringing out that child side of you, you'll enjoy it. So, is New Fantasyland just for kids? Absolutely not. A very interesting aspect of Fantasyland is the rise. And if you have that kid side of you, like I mentioned before, New Fantasyland is just going to bring it out. That's what it's all about. On your Disney vacation, it's all about bringing out that childlike innocence that's inside of you, but you are holding down because of the adult life that we have to put on. So when did New Fantasyland open? The newest edition of Fantasyland that you see opened in 2012, with the original opening in 1971 with the Magic Kingdom. On December 6, Disney's Magic Kingdom was expanded to include Fantasyland based on the Disney princesses Belle, Snow White, and Ariel. New Fantasyland is more like a improved version of the Fantasyland that was created in 1971 at the Magic Kingdom. During this expansion, this Magic Kingdom land expanded from 107 acres to 133 acres to occupy the new improvements that would make the fantasy land that you see today. Today, the new changes made did not outshine the old buildings or rides. Instead, they complemented each other perfectly. The Rise of New Fantasyland. There are so many different attractions for you to try out from Seven Dwarfs in the Mine Train to Dumbo's Great Adventure. But today we're going to go over the most notable attractions here in New Fantasyland that you can make note of for your trip to Walt Disney World. First, we're going to start in Storybook Circus. This part of the area is themed around the Disney movie Dumbo. Storybook Circus replaced Mickey's Toontown Fair, which was a favorite among many Disney fans. In Storybook, you can ride Dumbo the Flying Elephant, Next, there's the Barnstormer starring the great Goofini, and if you know Goofy very well, you know he doesn't know how to fly. <laughs> so hang on tight and enjoy this ride. After you enjoy that little mini version of a roller coaster, you can go over to Casey Jr. and get soaked. This is officially called the Casey Jr. in the Soak Station, and it is a place for the little ones to cool off the hay. If you're a kid at heart and it's a hot, July, August, September day here in Florida, walk across there, get a nice little cool off refreshment from the water. Lastly, there's the Fantasyland Railroad Station, which usually takes you around the park, but right now it is stationary due to a lot of renovations happening at the Magic Kingdom. Here you're going to experience Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid, and while you may or may not be a fan of Ariel. This is one of those classic dark ride fills 
that you get in this Disney attraction. It has the Omni Mover, which you could find in attractions and rides such as Spaceship Earth over in Epcot or the Haunted Mansion in the Magic Kingdom. On this journey, you'll get to see waterfalls and cliffs and even Ursula. You get to pass through the Witch of the Sea before Ariel and Prince Edward live happily ever after. Afterwards, you can even meet Ariel and get your photo with her, if it does return, in Ariel's Grotto. The next attraction in this area of Fantasyland is Enchanted Tales with Belle. In Enchanted Tales with Belle, you'll get to visit Maurice's cottage and get the chance to play a variety of roles from this classic Disney movie. Up next is the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. The Seven Dwarfs Mine Train was designed based on the Snow White film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It's one of Disney's classic attractions, and this is a roller coaster that is good for beginners and people who just like roller coasters in general. Of course, you're not gonna get that Cedar Point high thrill here, but it is a nice cute ride for you to try while you are at Walt Disney World. Now we're gonna go over from the Enchanted Forest type area of New Fantasyland, and we're gonna head over to the Castle Courtyard. Here you're gonna see the quote unquote old attractions such as Winnie the Pooh, Alice in Wonderland, the teacups, it's a small world, and you have Mickey Mouse's Philharmonic, and the Peter Pan flight. So what about that famous Walt Disney World train that you will see in storybook section of New Fantasyland? The Magic Kingdom Railroad Station has an old-fashioned steam train which takes you on a 20-minute ride around the Magic Kingdom to view some of its most popular attractions. This rail station is located on Main Street and has three stations which include the one on Main Street, USA, Frontierland, and Storybook Circus at Fantasyland. Unfortunately, the train is not currently running but you can go to the train station in New Fantasyland over near Storybook Circus and get a photo in front of the train. Let's talk about the places to eat while you are in Fantasyland. But there are a couple of places that you should be sure to try to check out while you are in Fantasyland. The main one is the Be Our Guest restaurant. It serves French cuisine and they serve things such as French onion soup, potato leek soup, so much more. You can even do breakfast there if you like to try that out. There's also the storybook circus snacks section, which has a variety of snacks like the jumbo pretzel. Then you have Prince Eric's Village Market, which also has interesting drinks such as the witch's frozen brew and other type of seasonal snacks that they change up so always just check out that menu before you get there because it's always changing then we have Gaston's Tavern as mentioned before where you can sit there hang out with the famous villain of the Beauty and the Beast saga and enjoy some snacks other new fantasy dining locations include Cheshire Cafe you can get some crazy delicious desserts I love when they have the cupcakes there there's also the Cinderella's Royal Table, which is hard to get a reservation. And right now with all of the things going on with the pandemic, just double check to make sure that you can even still go during your visit. And if they will have like the full fledged opportunity for you to see some of the princesses that come through. There's my favorite, the Friar's Nook, where you can get a loaded tater tots and all kind of incredible fantasy options that you can even think of even these chicken buffalo blue cheese covered tater tots which are delicious they have also in the past had macaroni topped with beef brisket so this is a place that you don't want to miss there's also the pinocchio's village house prince eric's village market like i mentioned earlier and storybook treats where you can get some the nice cool little desserts and ice creams that come out that everybody loves to post over on instagram so is new fantasy land good for adults of course it is like i mentioned earlier if you are a kid at heart you will enjoy this land because it's at walt disney world of course you may not have as much fun as 
the kids around you or your own kid but you will still have a great time you can even go out to the be our guest restaurant and have you a nice adult beverage such as the peach bellini that i really enjoy or you could go over to gaston's tavern and treat yourself to an oversized cinnamon bun you'll totally love the fact that most of the rides and attractions in Fantasyland are suitable for anyone in any age group how fun would it be to ride the Seven Doors Mine Train with your family, your friends, or even on that solo trip as an adult? It's all about what you make it when you go to Walt Disney World. Of course, you are an adult. You can get the best of both worlds, meaning you can bring out your childlike innocence inside of you, and you can also get the perks of adults, like, you know, getting you a nice little beverage at Be Our Guest Restaurant or any of the restaurants on property that sell beer and wine. Let's go through a few of the top tips for your trip to Fantasyland. My first tip for you is to rope drop the Magic Kingdom. That way you can get back to the Seven Doors Mine Train, which is the most popular ride. Get on that first, knock it out, and then you'll have the rest of the day to explore the park. My next tip for you is if Fast Passes do return, to make sure you book your Fast Passes in advance, get your Disney reservation, done so that you don't have to worry about those things on your vacation at Walt Disney World. My other tip for you is to budget. Yes, you're going to want to budget because there are a lot of shops in New Fantasyland that have some of the best Disney trinkets and souvenirs for you to bring back home, but you don't want to overdo it because as an adult, that means you have the power to swipe that card or pull out that cash. So have a budget to kind of keep everything in check. So in all lessons, guys, just have fun at New Fantasyland. It is a nice homage to some of the classic Disney attractions. And it's not really like the adult place, but if you are a fan of the Disney films from back in the day, then you'll definitely love New Fantasyland. It's colorful, it's imaginative, it's creative, and I think you'll have a great time. So I hope you enjoyed this guide. Remember that if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. But let me know what is your favorite ride in Fantasyland or what ride do you wish was in Fantasyland that Disney has removed? Let me know in the comments section below. And until next time, happy park hopping hipsters.